everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of Tech Talk, votingtechtalk.com. Uh, happy you're here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let's geek out. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, about navigation. Lars asks, Jeff, I've seen some manufacturers label their sounders as forward scanning, side view, or down view. What do you recommend? Oh, <laughs> Lars. Thank you for uh, bringing a question that um, many of us sort of ponder. Well, first of all, the reality is that there is there are features and then there's marketing words to describe those features, right? So all the words that you use, like forward scanning, side view, down view, some of those words are proprietary, right? Like side view, down view is, uh, I believe, something that Garmin talks about. And different manufacturers have different words to describe the same thing as a way for them to differentiate themselves from others. It's, you know, it happens in all industry, including our own, the marine industry. So let's, uh, taking away the words, and let's give them a definition that we can all agree on, right? So traditionally, you have uh, depth sounders that just give you sort of depth as a number, right? Um, it's a transducer, sends an echo, measures the time. Uh, between sending and receiving and gives you, calculates and gives you depth. Pretty straightforward, been around for a while. Next level up is sort of these, what would be called fish finders, uh, sonars, sounders. And these are devices that not only give you depth, but also give you a bottom profile of the depth and also sort of an indication of what sort of bottom is directly underneath your boat. Right? Like, um, is there a lot of algae, grass? Is it hard bottom, soft bottom? And so you can do that through fish finders and sounders. Right. And so obviously, the fish find, the guys and, and gals are out there fishing, they know all about fish finders. And that's sort of, you know, the main purpose for those sounders. That being said, though, the rest of us who are cruisers might benefit from having a what is otherwise known as a fish finder just to actually be able to see the bottom profile over time, right? Because it's not important so much what the depth is. That's one thing, but it's really about the trend, right? So if we're on our boats and we're going slowly at one knot and the depth's 100, and then three seconds later, it's at 80. Three seconds later, it's at, you know, again, it's at 60. And three seconds later, now it's at 40. So nine seconds and you drop 60 feet. You know, all of us should be panicking, right? So it's all about the trends. And it's not to say, of course, you know, I realize that bottoms are not always predictable. We have those rocks here called pinnacle rocks that come out of the ocean out of nowhere, like literally like a pinnacle out of nowhere. And yes, they do happen. But that being said, there are patterns, right? And it's better to have something than nothing. And so a fish finder is really useful uh, in the ability to actually follow the bottom profile. And it's useful for anchoring uh, and it's useful to sort of Always know what sort of depth you were, had, were behind you a few seconds or maybe 10, 20 seconds ago, depending on the speed of your vessel, right? Because it shows you a histogram right, of what the depth was as you're moving forward. So that's useful. The next ones are two types of uh, sonars, right? You have what are called side view. And uh, I believe Hummingbird actually came up with that technology years ago. And we had installed that on a lot of police boats. And that's a view to actually see on either side of your vessel, right? And uh, so you're actually looking not so much down, right? But actually, and it's hard for me to do this because my arms are going to be out of the camera, but you're actually looking on either side of the vessel. Now, of course, it doesn't work at high speeds and there's a maximum depth ratio to uh, how wide you can go. And there's all these specs. And again, these are really useful. Um, a lot of boaters who are into fishing will actually uh, use it to find bait balls, right? Or to see structure underneath ledges and whatnot. Also very useful for anchoring. So definitely some boaters out there uh, that are going in anchorages that aren't always sandy bottoms and have rocky ledges. And it's, you know, you're curious because sometimes the depth underneath our hull might be you know, 10 feet, maybe, you know, five meters, 10 meters. But clearly, 20 feet to the right or 20 feet to the left, part or starboard, right? Now there's a ledge, right? And uh, sometimes we don't always stay where we are. The wind blows us over. And so it might be a good thing to consider having a depth sounder that looks on either side of your hull. And I did that on my boat, by the way. I have one of those depth sounders. 
I always wanted one. I didn't get it right away, uh, but I installed that on my sailboat last year and I'm happy I did that. So not only do I have a down, right? So like a fish finder, I also have a fish finder that looks on either side of the hull. And, and that's really useful for going in like difficult anchorages where I'm a little bit nervous and I'm pushing myself, but you know, that's part of the fun, right? And then the last one was Ford Scan. Ford Scan uh, is a product that's been around for years. Um, there's a company that Garmin bought, I believe it's Interface, which gave them this forward scanning capability. And it's really what it is. It's sort of like radar, but looking forward. I mean, it's not for everyone, right? Uh, depending, some, some boaters are concerned about hitting that transducer that is actually exposed. That's happened to a few of our boaters here in the Pacific Northwest. Not that often, but it still hurts because when that happens, you've got to replace the transducer and that's out of pocket. It's going to fail and not make a hole in your boat. It's meant to break easily, but it still hurts, right? Some boaters that go uh, here in the Pacific Northwest that go in places that are a little, like literally uncharted, like uh, the west side of Haida Gwaii, or are going in the inside passage and are going in lagoons and stuff like that, and they're really pushing the boundaries of their anchoring, uh, gun calling will actually also use Ford's camp. It's probably not what we all hope for, but I think we might have unrealistic expectations of having a radar that looks forward and sees logs uh, just directly ahead of our vessel. So it's about more aligning your expectations with what's possible as opposed to being disappointed with the product, right? It's really, what are we expecting and what's really realistic? So all different price points uh, gets from where I started, the least expensive to the most expensive, right? So, and then you got to decide what makes sense for your boat, what are you going to do for your boat? Because at the end of the day, remember this, there's no such thing as you need all of this, right? Like all of us need a depth sounder that I think we can pretty much agree with pretty much universally. Beyond that, it depends on your budget, what you're doing, and really about your level of safety or your level of comfort, right? How comfortable are you with risk? What are you going to do to minimize it? Some of us use gadgets. Some other ones use a lot more common sense and better preparation. So it's really up to us. Uh, but a great question, Lars, and thanks for asking if you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out, uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more <laughs> of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.